Let's take a look at problem 66A. Uh, this has us preparing an income statement a statement of retained earnings and a balance sheet. What makes this problem trickier than the problems we did in chapter one way back when is that it's a merchandiser's financial statement. So that means it's a company that sells inventory. If you look back to chapter one, it was services based companies. This company will have sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit. There's more here to be worried about, but I think you'll find it's not that much harder than chapter one. Just a couple of new quirks and features. As always, TonyBell.com to download this workbook you just click the PDF and you can have the workbook for yourself. Uh, no logins or anything like that. Okay. Uh, Julie's plumbing supplies trial balance is shown below here and nice. It's right. It's all in order. The assets first then liabilities, then, uh, equity accounts, etc., etc. So that makes our life a little easier, honestly, than the chapter one problems. And it says in good form, prepare an income statement. Uh, for the year ended March 31st, 2029, and compute gross profit percentage. We'll actually do the gross profit percentage very early on here, but let's go through and let's just see what we're up against. Okay, cash, nothing to worry about there. Accounts receivable, okay, that's normal. Allowance for doubtful accounts. I need to think back to, I think it was chapter five, where we dealt with accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful accounts. And what we said was accounts receivable minus the allowance equals AR net, AR net. So in this case, our accounts receivable is 18,000, our allowance is three, our net account receivable is $15,000. That's the number we present to our shareholders. Remember what it means, right? Accounts receivable is what I've owed. Allowance for double accounts is I know if lots of people owe me money, some of them aren't gonna pay. I estimate that $3,000 isn't gonna come in. So how much do I think I can collect? I think I can collect 15,000. Well, that's what I tell my shareholders. So that's gonna be a key number. And that's a new concept beyond what we learned in chapter one. Uh, inventory, okay, that's just an asset. Prepaid insurance, a current asset. Equipment and accumulated depreciation, we know what to do here, right? We can calculate equipment net. There's that word net again. And equipment is 125, the accumulated depreciation is 20, so the net equipment is 105,000. 125 minus the accumulated depreciation of 20 gives us 105. That's what our equipment's really worth, or the accounting estimate. We call that the book value of the value of the equipment. Continuing. Uh, we're into liabilities now, accounts payable, wages payable, unearned revenues, it says revenues, but we know it's a liability, a current liability, and they got a bank loan, let's assume that's long term. Carrying on, common shares, retained earnings, dividends, okay, nothing special there, and then we got these accounts, sales, revenues, and we got returns and allowances, and we got sales discounts. Well, I want you to think back to problems we did earlier this chapter. What we said was... Sales rev minus any discounts minus any returns, did these in opposite order as they appear in the list, equals sales rev net. There's that word again, net. So our net sales are the revenues minus any discounts, like per, uh, discounts we gave our customers, minus any returns. So uh, 365 minus 15, or what's our, uh, sorry, I got them in reverse order here, minus 10 for our discount and minus 15 for the returns. 365 minus 25 overall is $340,000. That's our net sales. And I always like to do this just in the margin here. If we have sales rev net, which we do have now, 340, And we know the next line down there is cost of goods sold, 150. We can calculate, gotta duck my head down here, uh, gross profit, also called gross margin. Our gross profit, 340 minus 150, is gonna be, what is that, 190. Now, I always think it's useful to have these in dollars, but also in percentages. Let's scroll down just a touch. Uh, too far. 
let's there that's the perfect amount of scrolling so our net sales is a hundred percent and we say say state everything as a percentage of that so our cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales is 150 divided by 340 we take our cogs divided by our sales we get 44.1 percent and 190 divided by 340 we get 55.9% as our gross profit percentage. And again, this number is so scrutinized. I'm on a board of directors of a company. We spend a lot of time talking about the gross profit percentage. I watch shareholder meetings of Apple and Amazon and these types of companies. They all talk about this number and they talk about it as a percentage. So your professor may ask about it and we have asked about it. It says compute the gross profit percentage. We have it. It's 55.9%. And if you're operating a business, you want to see this number rise typically. Uh, okay, continuing down the list, these are all just normal operating expenses all the way down to interest, which we know is other. Uh, so these are all operating expenses. That's an other and income tax is income tax. It's its own category. It's a category unto itself. Uh, the question says, give us an income statement to start. So we, we've done the gross profit percentage. Now we're going to do the income statement and the income statement starts with a beautiful, hopefully beautiful three line title, Julie's plumbing supplies, Julie's plumbing supplies that's the name of our company the next line down is the name of the statement we are asked to prepare an income statement some of our european friends might call this a statement of operation if they're really into ifrs but uh, we'll call it an income statement here uh julie's plumbing supplies income statement and we say for the year ended for the year ended and March 31st, 2029. Okay, so we've got ourselves a beautiful title. Now, income statement is the summary of revenues and expenses, and we've got all of our revenues and expenses from here down to the bottom, right? These are all revenues and expenses. So we just need to lay it out in a beautiful way, right? Financial statements are uh, formal reports presented for outsiders of the firm. So it is important to lay this out properly and we will do it starting with our sales revenue. We start with revenues. And if we are a merchandiser, we start with net sales, our net sales. We calculated above $340,000 next line down cost of goods sold our cost of goods sold 150 and the next line down gross profit aka gross margin 340 minus 150 is 190 into the next big category operating expenses and it's just that list of let's see one two three four five six seven so we just have to list them out uh starting with wages expense of fifty five thousand. Now, because I got a big long list, I list on the left, I total on the right. Bad debt expense was 5,000. Uh, advertising expense, 12,000. Uh, utilities expense, 2,000. Depreciation expense, 6,000. We've got uh, rent expense, 15 and insurance, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, rent expense was 15 and insurance expense 10. This brings us down to a subtotal total 
operating expenses, a key number to be sure. And it's just the total of that list. So 55 plus 5 plus 12 plus 2 plus 6 plus 15 plus 10 hundred and five thousand dollars and we have another subtotal this is one students often forget it's operating income so you're generally it would be revenues you know, if we had a service company you know service revenue minus operating expenses equals operating income here it's gross profit minus the operating expenses equals operating income I got to tell you, lots of my students do mess this step up. They either forget the subtotal or they just get it wrong for some reason. Uh, 190 minus 105 is 85 thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, now what are we left with? Well, we've got you know we've done our sales, our cost of goods sold, our net sales, cost of goods sold. We've just done our operating expenses. We just have interest and taxes. So the heading above interest is other expenses now we will have other things that go in here in the future but thus far in our course we've only introduced the one which is interest which we consider a non-operating expense or other uh it was seven thousand dollars another subtotal and that brings us down to the subtotal called income before taxes or income before tax, sometimes this is called. 85 minus 7 is 78,000. And then we have income tax. Our company's income tax expense, 21,000. And that brings us to our profit, our bottom line, our net income, 78 minus 21. I should be able to do this in my head. 57. Yeah, 57. Put a double underline there. And then in terms of format, we'd like to see dollar signs at the top of each column. So a dollar sign here and a dollar sign here because we have two separate columns and a dollar sign beside anything double underlined. And that's sufficient for me. So we have fully completed part one. We've done the income statement. We've computed gross profit percentage. In the next part of the video, we'll continue the problem and we'll do a statement of retained earnings. Let me put that up on the screen. By the way, if you got to this far, I hope you'll consider hitting a like button on your way out and stay tuned for our next video. See you in the next one. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.